Hi, I'm Rita. Welcome, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Life Worth Reading. Today, I am filming a book haul. I haven't filmed one since I uploaded in September after my New York trip where I did some real damage to my wallet and to my shelves. But I haven't done a haul since then and I have accumulated quite a few books since then. To be fair, it has been seven months since that book haul, so you will forgive, hopefully, the amount of books that I have accumulated since then. They are mostly books that I bought on my own, birthday and slash Christmas presents because my birthday is around Christmas, and then just another one that I bought with gift cards that I got for my birthday. So without further ado, let's just get into the haul. Today I thought that I would organize this by color, which is something that I've never done before. And I thought that I would start with this black spine, mostly black spine book. So let's start with this little stack here. I'm going to start with Tiger by Polly Clark. This is what I like to call an impulse purchase. There was this one time where I was at a bookshop and they had like this 60% off sale off of several books and this was one of the ones that I bought. I know that this is about a primatologist that finds herself in like facing a wild tiger, an injured wild tiger. I know it's set in Siberian taiga and it's basic basically about like animal instincts and it's a survival story and I just found that to be quite interesting. It's not the most read book ever, but I don't know, something about it spoke to me even though it was an impulse purchase, but I have enjoyed stories of survival and of like man versus nature, so I think this will be a very interesting one. Next up, also in that same sale, I got Conjure Women by Afia Atacora, and this book is the story of three women during the war in reconstruction between the, the 1850s and the 1860s, and it's about a woman who is a midwife, her daughter, and a slave master's daughter, Verena. And it's just basically about their three unforgettable women, their secrets and passions, their tragedies and desires, and the length they will go to to save themselves and those who they love. I love stories about women, Q, Saoirse Ronan, and Little Women, because I just, I think women's stories matter. They just matter. And that's why I picked this book up. I actually heard from a book reviewer that I really trust that she really didn't like this book, but that just made me the more curious to pick it up because it does seem like something that I would definitely enjoy and it does have high ratings. So I'm very curious to know why that certain bookstagrammer didn't like this book. But yeah, I just love a historical fiction and I love a historical fiction about women. That's all the justification that I have for this book and I think that's all the justification that I need. And now we have one of my most recent purchases, which I bought at a second hand bookshop that is that has like a solidarity cause. So all the people volunteer there and like all the money is donated to causes and man, that just gets me because every time that I see a book, I'm like, okay, at least it's for a good cause. But the book that I bought was actually Burial Rites by Hannah Kent. I have heard a lot about this book over the years. This is also a historical fiction set in Iceland about a woman who will be executed for murdering her husband. And she has to spend some time with a family before her execution. And I think I've heard that it's just like this really dreary and icy setting. Very sad, very upsetting. And I just... I'm getting into that. I'm getting into that. I'm hopeful that I like it. I don't love this cover, so probably after I read it, I will probably unhaul it because it's not my favorite. But I've heard that the writing is really, really good. It's another historical fiction about women. We just love to see it, I think. So I'm very excited about this one. It was very cheap and honestly, no regrets in buying this one. Next up, we got a birthday present from my boyfriend that I... I am so excited about and that is La Pona by Otesha Mosfeg. I have never read an Otesha Mosfeg book, but this is probably the one that speaks to me the most. This is set in the Middle Ages and it's very, I've heard that it's a little bit like surreal, 
and a little bit chaotic and interesting and i just love learning about the middle ages i had a class last year that just made me really really intrigued about the middle ages and so this just came about in a time that i really want to read it and i'm so excited to get to it it's about like a lost shepherd's son and in this village weird things start happening i know that not a lot of people love the shamasbeck book but i have no idea how to feel about them because i've never read one before this will probably be a huge win in my eyes and hopefully if i like this one i'll try other books by this author because yeah she's very popular and i know i want to know why again another really 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 recent purchase like a month ago was filthy animals by brandon taylor this is the author of real life a book that i'm also really really excited to buy one day read but yeah this came about also like during a big big sale so this was really cheap and this is a collection of short stories about i think university kids i think like just young people in the american midwest i thought it was a little i thought it was about university but maybe it's not maybe it's just like about young people in general but i love her short story collection i love own voices books and i think that this is everything needed to be a win in my opinion i also really like the cover and i'm just really excited about this one so i can actually try real life and i can't remember what his other book is called but i'm really really excited to get to this one then we have a book that I'm currently reading for a vlog and that is Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Fawcett. This book is about our main character, Emily Wilde, who is an... How, what do you... Professor. Oh my god. She's a professor at Cambridge and she is putting together an encyclopedia of all the fae and all of her fairy knowledge, which is very exciting and it has never been done before. And she is currently on an excursion to a faraway, like, Icelandic style Scandinavian island where there is a new type of fae that has never been encountered before. And she is accompanied by her friend, but also sometimes academic rival, Wendell, and they have to complete a lot of little missions in this faraway land i am currently reading this book i'm almost done with it and i am eating it up it's not that i was expecting to not enjoy it i wanted to enjoy it every book that i buy i want to enjoy but i was not expecting to enjoy it this much because it is even though it is wildly loved it has also some controversy surrounding it a lot of people also don't like it but i am eating it up i am so more thoughts on it on a vlog later on but yeah i'm really enjoying this book and lastly on my black spine stack i have clockwork orange by anthony burgess this is a portuguese translation this was gifted to me by my brother on christmas and i'm really excited to get to this one i have never read this book obviously that's a stupid thing to say but i've also never watched the movie i used to think that this is a little bit too violent for me because i know that this is about like a gang that just inflicts chaos and there's a lot of violence and a lot of sexual assault as well so this has never been particularly my cup of tea but now that i own it i am going to read it hopefully i'll enjoy it it's one of my brother's favorite books so I feel like by enjoying this one I'll get to know him a little bit better and I am just happy that someone gifted me a book on Christmas. That's all I can ever hope for. Moving on to my red and pink stack. The first book that I got I bought alongside Burial Rights and that is Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer. I know that this is part of a series. I currently only own the first one. It is quite short. It's a science fiction but I'm actually not too sure what it is about. So I'm going to read you the little, little synopsis on the back. It says, Welcome to Area X, an ed Edenic wilder wilderness, an environmentally disaster zone, a mystery for 30 years. The Southern Reach, a secretive government agency, has sent 11 expeditions to investigate Area X. One has ended in mass suicide, another in a hail of gunfire, the 11th in a fatal cancer epidemic. 
now four women embark on the 12th expedition into the unknown yeah that's what i remember from it that it's like a, an exhibition an exhibition an expedition into this like unknown area by four women i know that the movie is also really popular i haven't seen it yet and i'm glad that i haven't so i can actually read this book and i don't know it's quite a short one i know it's a series but if i don't enjoy it i'm not going to continue on but if i do it is a short little book it's another like another little adventure into sci-fi which is a genre that i'm not usually very comfortable with and so i'm just very excited to see what i think of this one next up we have a book that you have already seen before the marriage portrait by mango farrell I bought this book late October, so it has been a little while since I read it. I'm going to read it during the springtime, if you see my spring TBR. So there's not a lot to say about this book. It's said during the Renaissance times, and it follows a woman called Lucrezia. And she finds out that her husband is attempting to kill her. So I think that this is a story of survival, but within the court setting and within the renaissance time which is very very interesting to me again a historical fiction about women we love to see it we do we do love to see it and this is just another book that i'm really excited to get to and i'm so glad that i bought also this cover it's a yes again another very recent purchase is deacon king kong by james mcbride I bought this book because it was on sale, but also because this is the author of a new release I really wanted to try, which is called the Heaven and Earth Grocery Store, something like that, something of the sort, which is a very interesting title. And I've been seeing some very high reviews for that book. And when I remember, like I remember seeing this book around a couple of years ago, I just didn't associate the author with this new release that I was interested in. And so when I saw that, I thought, okay, I'm going to start with this one, see if I enjoy his writing style. This is set in South Brooklyn during the late 1960s. And basically it's about an old church deacon who shoots the local drug dealer who used to be part of the church's baseball team. So this is pretty much about community, about people, about a community that's under threat. And I just want to know more about these characters. I want to know more about this plot because I do not know a lot of, at the moment. So I can't give you a better synopsis than that. But it's just a very interesting book. It's also set in New York during an interesting time. And I'm just very excited to get to it to see if I will enjoy the Heaven and Earth grocery store. Another Christmas present by my brother was... I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings by Maya Angelou. I have never read a Maya Angelou book and I really feel like I am missing out. I also love this edition because I love this publishing house that we have here. It's like one of my favorites. They always publish amazing nonfiction and fiction books alike. And I just love their edition so much. And I'm just very, very excited to get to this because I feel like it's a very big blind spot in my literature life that i haven't read in my angelou i really do feel like i'm missing out and i want to get to this really really badly this year hopefully hopefully i'll do it and i'm just so happy that i have this book i have other books by her that i also want to read like our prisons obsolete letters for my daughter I think is the title so there are a couple other books that i want to get to by my angelou but this is definitely a priority since i already own it and i am so excited to get to it then we have a book that was also on my spring tbr so i will not dwell too much time on it and that is briefly a delicious life by Nell stevens this is the last book that i bought in 2023 like very very late into the year and i am just so happy about it i love this edition i love a hardcover recently i've been loving a hardcover which has been a struggle financially but i'm just obsessed with this cover obsessed with this concept it's about a little ghost girl in the i think 19th century as well yeah it's like 1838 and it's about this little ghost girl who discovers that she is like kind of queer in the afterlife and she's crushing on a woman and who is the wife of frederick chopin by the way so it's just a very intriguing premise a very spring vibes i am really really happy that i own it and i can't wait to get to it because i feel like this will be one that i really enjoy lastly on the red and orange 
spines i have harlem shuffle by colson whitehead i am so happy that i own this book first of all the cover is so intriguing i've been looking at it for a couple of years now and i've been really intrigued to pick it up and i know that it's also set in harlem which is really exciting i just love books set in new york i do after i've been there it's like one of those really annoying things that people say like but since i've been there it's something that i'm very interested in reading now i actually have no idea what the synopsis is i just know that it's set there i'm guessing it's probably also about a community about things that happen to characters is that bad to say probably but I don't know. I'm just so excited to read this book and I don't even know what it's about. It says here, Harlem Shuffle's ingenious story plays out in a beautifully recreated New York City of the early 1960s. It's a family saga masquerading as a crime novel, a hilarious morality play, a social novel about race and power, and ultimately a love letter to Harlem. That's all that I need to know. And I'm so happy about owning this book. I think that I'm really going to love it. Also, I've never read anything by Colson Whitehead, which is criminal in the least. Moving on to my yellow spines, I have a Christmas present by my friend Bia, and that is Honey and Spice by Balu Babalola. I am so happy that I own this book as well. This book is a romance, one of the only romances that I own currently, because I'm not, I'm no longer in my romance era. But if there's anyone who can make me be there is Bo Babalola. I trust her completely, even though I've never read a book by her. But I know this is like a fake dating situation. It features also like a radio show, which are both like little tropes that I think that I'll really enjoy. So I'm just so happy about this book. Thank you so much, Bia. I love you so much. So much. And I cannot wait to read this book. Next up, I have a book that I bought secondhand and I just read discovered that it has like a little sticker it says ex libris adelaide nicolic so i have your book girl and this is called this mournable body by titi dungarengba and this is about our main character tabunzai and i think that this is just about like a homecoming which i find very interesting when we have like a a female main character and we have a journey about her growing up and then returning home i always found it very fascinating it has it has themes of identity race as well gender politics so i'm very excited to read this book i don't want to know a lot about it going into it it's not the most popular book as well but honestly i don't really care about that this just really spoke to me and i'm very glad that i have it Next up, we have The Stolen Bicycle by Yu Ming Yi. And this is about a character who is looking for his father. And this is set in... I, I don't remember. Oh my god, how bad of me. Yeah, this doesn't have a synopsis. But I know it's about a character who was looking for his father. And I think that he worked in like the police department. And I just found it very interesting. It also says that it was long listed for the Man Booker International Prize of 2018. So I do usually trust the Booker Prize Award. And so if it was long listed, it's probably because it is a very beautiful novel. And I want to give it a try. I just saw that I'm running out of battery and I don't have a spare. So we're just going to speed run the last stack firstly we have rainbow milk by paul mendez this is a book that i have my eye on for a long time now and this is about our main character jesse and he finds himself doing sex work in the uk i think that this is set in the uk and i've heard amazing things about this book and about this author's writing i think that it explores sexuality sex work what it means to be of color and a man of color and i'm just really excited to see what kind of discussions go on within this book because i feel like men in sex work is something that is not usually talked about so i'm very excited to see how this book will deal with it then we have the prophets by robert jones jr a book that i've also had my own eye on for a long time it's set during slavery and it's about two men who grow quite closer and fall in love with each other amidst everything that is going on i've heard that it's very tragic it also explores same-sex relationships it's a historical fiction and i've heard that it has beautiful writing so it has all of the elements that i need to love it and you guessed it i'm excited to read it 
We are now in the home stretch, people, only for more books. We have The Offing by Benjamin Myers, a book that I bought simply because of the cover. Look at this. Isn't this so summer vibes? And this is about a summer following the Second World War where a 16-year-old boy makes friends with an older woman in the neighborhood that they are in. And so I think this is just a story about like young kid strikes a friendship with older person and the lessons that come along with it and i just thought that it's very very interesting it's quite short and i think that this will be a perfect read for summertime then a room with a view by em forster this is a classic i think and i know that it's set in italy it was published in the early 20th century i also bought it secondhand in a bookshop for a good cause okay i did it okay i did it but it's also because it's a classic and i want to read more classics this year next year it's uh something that i've been thinking about and something that i want to get better at and so i decided to buy this it's also very summery like the italian landscape are you kidding me i wish i was there right now and i just can't wait to read this book this summer hopefully and find out what actually goes on in florence then we have The Man Who Fell in Love with the Moon by Tom Spanbauer and this is a book also about a main character who falls in love. It's about a Native American gay man who falls in love with a cowboy, I think. And it's about their journey, identity as well. I just love a contemporary book about these types of themes. I thought the cover was very intriguing. I'm always looking forward to reading more Native American fiction and so I think that this will be a win for me If you've read this book, let me know because I know this book is not very popular But if you somehow have read it, please do let me know Okay, and the last two books that I have are Our Share of Night by Marina Enriquez I have hauled this book before I think in a vlog and I bought this on Halloween actually so it was very fitting this is a horror book that I'm going to read this spring as well. It's about a cult in Argentina, a father and son journey through the occult and the demonic. It was very creepy. I have read halfway of it. I read until halfway point last year and I'm so excited to get to it this spring. Reread it from start to finish and hopefully I'll give it a really high rating because I was actually really loving this book before I stopped reading it. And lastly, we have another impulse purchase that I... Because I had never heard of this book and I usually buy books that I've never heard of but this is The Fortune Man by Nadifa Mohammed. I love this cover as well. It's also a hardback and it also says shortlisted for the 2021 Booker Prize. So you can see what kind of happened here. This is also set in the 1950s and it follows our main character in a community where there is a murder and a trial and it's basically about the investigation and about the shenanigans that come up with it due to this trial and this murder. It was actually shouted out by Camila Shamsi and it says a writer of great humanity which made me really intrigued to read it because I know that she is also a very prolific historical fiction writer and I also want to read her books so the fact that she blurbed this made me really really excited to read it and I just think that I'm going to have a really good time. Also, the font is huge. I love this edition. And I honestly cannot wait to read it. And let's look what's under here. Oh, it's just black. That's fine. This is just one of the piles. So I cannot hold any books any longer. But I hope that you have enjoyed this video and this haul. Let me know which book you have hauled recently. Or if there's any book here that you read and loved. And if you did enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for bookish content. And I'll see you in my next video. I hope you have a nice day and also remember that life is worth reading.